الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون صدق الله مولانا العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم شاهست حسین بادشاہست حسین دینست حسین دین پناہست حسین سرداد نداد دست در دست یزید حقا کے بنائے لا الہست حسین کیا بات رضا اس چمنستان کرم کی کیا بات رضا اس چمنستان کرم کی زہرا ہے کلی جس میں حسین اور حسن پھول یا الہی فضل فرما مصطفیٰ کے واسطے یا رسول اللہ کرم کیجے خدا کے واسطے مشکلیں حل کر شہے مشکل کشا کے واسطے کربلائیں رد شہید کربلا کے واسطے کر بلائیں رد شہید کربلا کے واسطے کر بلائیں رد شہید کربلا کے واسطے موسٹ آنربل اینڈ اسٹیمڈ ایلڈرز بردرز سسٹرز بوائز اینڈ گرلز اللہ تبارکہ و تعالی has once again blessed the entire Muslim Ummah with the very special and auspicious month of Muharram al-Haram. This is the first month of the Islamic calendar and it has many unique distinctions. in terms of the history of humanity, the history of Anbiya and Mursaleen, and the history of Islam. In numerous outstanding events have taken place in this blessed month. But my subject matter, inshallah, for this sermon, for this speech, concerns the shahadat and martyrdom of the shahadai karbubala ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'een and in particular, their leader, their master, our leader, our master, Hazrat Sayyiduna 
امام حسین رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ دیر آر مینی مینی ڈائمینشنز ٹو ہز لائف ٹو ہز ٹیچنگز ریگارڈنگ ہز عزامت اینڈ شوکت ان دا لائٹ آف قرآن اینڈ سننا I want to congratulate the entire team of Sunni Dawat e Islami for doing such wonderful work in spreading the true message of Islam according to the aqaid of the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaa o Sunni Islam. Time of is of the essence And inshallah, in this very short time, I want to shed light upon four powerful lessons from the plains of Karbala, from the life of Hazrat Imam Hussain. رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ جسٹ ناؤ آئی ہیڈ دی آنر آف ریسائٹنگ اے نمبر آف ورسز فرام سورہ البقرہ فرام ورس نمبر ون فائیو ٹو نمبر ون If I can just, inshallah, read the translation from Kanzul Iman Sharif of Mujaddid-e-Azam, Imam Ahmad Raza Fazil-e-Barelwi, radhi Allah ta'ala. He translates, To meri yaad karo, Mai tumhara charcha karunga, Aur mera haq baano, Aur meri na shukri na karo. Ay iman walo, صبر اور نماز سے مدد چاہو بے شک اللہ صابروں کے ساتھ ہے اور جو خدا کی راہ میں مارے جائیں انہیں مردہ نہ کہو بلکہ وہ زندہ ہیں ہاں تمہیں خبر نہیں اور ضرور ہم تمہیں آزمائیں گے کچھ ڈر اور بھوک سے اور کچھ مالوں اور جانوں اور پھلوں کی کمی سے اور خوشخبری سنا ان صبر والوں کو کہ جب ان پر کوئی مصیبت پڑے تو کہیں ہم اللہ کے مال ہیں اور ہم کو اسی کی طرف پھرنا یہ لوگ ہیں جن پر ان کے رب کی درودیں ہیں اور رحمت اور یہی لوگ راہ پر ہیں دس از دا ٹرانسلیشن آف دیز بیوٹیفل آیا وچ آئی ہیڈ دی آنر ریسائٹنگ ان مائی خطبہ دیز آیا اسپیک آف دی امپورٹینس آف صبر اینڈ صلاح دی انٹائر ایونٹس آف کربلا دا جسٹ آف دا میسج آف دی شہادت آف حسین اعظم رضی اللہ تعالی عن It can be summed up. Message of Karbala, very simple, very clear and manifest. Quran speaks of the importance of seeking help from patience and from prayers. What a coincidence 
that in the Arabic language the Quranic words are sabr and salah both beginning with sad and when we translate in English patience and prayers both beginning with P. Let me draw your attention to the very first time when our Nabi alayhi salatu was salam Sayyidul Mursaleen Khatamun Nabiyeen Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam He was approached by Hazrat Sayyidina Jibreel Ameen Sayyidul Malaika by the command of Allah Hussain is playing in the laps of our Nabi alayhi salatu was salam as a child as a baby Jibreel informs him of what is to happen in the near future. On the 10th of uh, Muharram al Haram, Friday, 61st Hijrah, on the plains of Karbala. At that occasion, the beautiful dua that our Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam made for his grandson, whom he used to refer as Ibni, my son, both Hassan and Hussein. He would say they are my sons. But the dua of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam was Allahumma Atil Husayna Sabran wa Ajra. See how they connect the Quran, the Shahadat of Husayn, and the dua of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. Allahumma Atil Husayna Sabran wa Ajra. Oh Allah grant Husayn when you test him Sabr and Ajr, patience and reward. So, one very powerful message from the plains of Karbala for all Muslims, especially in these very difficult times for the Ummah Sabr, patience. Hadith refers to this. Practice as half of Iman, half of Islam, half of our faith. Innama yawaffa sabiruna ajrahum bi ghayri hisab. Quran Majid says, The reward of the patient is limitless, never ending. So when Allah is testing us in life, in any form, in any shape. As the Quran says, Wala nablu wannakum bishayim min al khawfi wal ju'i wa naqsim min al amwali wal anfusi wa thamarat wa bashiri sabirin. Allah says, I will test you. But again, wa bashiri sabirin. So if I and you are true lovers of Hussein Azam, we must practice patience. When Allah is testing us, however ever He wills to test us. Because life is all about a test. It's about ibtila. Allah di khalaq al maut wal hayat al layab lowakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. So sabr is a must. So this is one very powerful message from Karbala Sharif. Istiqamat is another powerful message. Istiqamat means steadfastness. Being firm like a mountain when it comes to your deen. No compromise. No give and take. No ifs and buts. Be very, very firm and staunch and strong. In your Iman, in your Iman Yat, in your practice of Deen. Allah says in the Quran, in the 41st Surah, Hamim as Sajda, Inna Ladina Kalu Rabbun Allahu, Thumma Stakamu Tatanazalu Alehimul Malaika, Allah Tahafu, Wala Tahzanu, Abshiru, Biljanna Tilati Kuntum Tu Adun. نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة 
وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِ أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِّنْ غَفُورِ الرَّحِيمِ Please find time to study these ayat. Make time for the love of Hussain Azam to study the Quran. Because you can't separate the two. They are inseparable. Even after he was martyred and beheaded, his head was carried on the spear by the enemies. Even then he was heard reading the Quran as a karamat. And a Christian priest accepted Islam through this karamat of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So istiqamat. Sufiya say al-istiqamatu fawqal karamah. You know, today we speak about the karamat of awliya. And they are haq. We are Sunnis. We believe. Quran speaks about the karamat of awliya. A hadith mentioned karamat of sahaba, of awliya. So we don't question that. But you know, istiqamat is a far greater state that only the very elite are granted. Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala was also Imamul Awliya. No doubt about it, he's far greater than Ghosi Azam. He's far greater than Data Sahib. He's far greater than Khaja Sahib. He's far greater than khaja e naqshband and khaja e suharwad and any other wali that are famous in our ummah. He's not only from the sahaba, Allahu Akbar, he's from the ahle bayt athar But plains of Karbala don't just simply teach us that Hussein showed his power and his might and his qurb with Allah through karamat if he wanted. Subhanallah. With one dua, the entire army of the enemies would have been wiped out. Wallah, I believe that. But no. He wanted to leave a message not only for Muslim, for humanity, for mankind to the day of judgment. So he showed you importance of istiqamat. Indeed, those say, who say we believe in Allah and then they are firm on that. Tatanazzalu alayhimul malaika. Malaika, angels descend upon them. And they give them the glad tidings of the success in the hereafter, of the pleasure of Allah, of entrance into paradise. So again, for the Muslims, of the 21st century, whether you live in Manchester, like myself, or in UK, or in India, or Pakistan, America, Australia, whichever part of the world you come from. Practice istiqamat. Be firm, unshakable, unmovable like a mountain when it comes to your deen. That is yet another powerful lesson from the plains of Karbala Sharif. Another very powerful lesson for us to draw, especially from the plains of Karbala, is the importance of Salah, Namaz, Five daily prayers about which Iqbal said Ye ek sajda jise tu gira samajta hai Hazar sajdon se deta hai adbi ko najat You know we claim we love Hussain We are named after him But when it comes to practice and implementation and following his teachings 
following in his footsteps, where do we stand? What is the state of the Ummah today when it comes to Salah? I don't need to tell you. Think about it. Hussain Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhu even on the last day of his Zahiri life the Fajr prayer on the 10th of Muharram was led in Jamaat in his camp. Even then they did not leave their prayers. It was a testing time for them. They knew that this is probably the last day of their life. Time does not permit me to go into detail. But then we see that even after many, many members of his family and friends have been slaughtered and butchered right in front of his very eyes, his own sons, his nephews, his disciples, his muridun, his lovers, the likes of Sayyidina Ali Akbar, the likes of Sayyidina Ali Asghar, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Qasim, Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, many of his other brothers, yes, many of his other brothers who were the sons of Hazrat Ali from other wives. The world doesn't tell you this. Three brothers who were also shuhada of Karbala, his own brothers from Hazrat Ali, are named Abu Bakr and Umar and Usman. They were also martyred. Hussein Azam was the last one to be martyred. Even then, it is well known that he was slain. His blessed head was separated from his blessed body whilst he was in the state of sajda. Allahu Akbar. What a man, what a giant, what a abdi salih of the one and only creator, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So brothers, sisters, true love of Hussein means we follow in his footsteps. Not only lip service, not only to refer to ourselves as Ghulam Hussain and Khadim Hussain and Ashik Hussain. It has to be shown in practice. Hussain loved his Salah. Hussain was beheaded whilst he was in Salah. And when he will rise on the Day of Judgment, inshallah he will rise in the position of Salah because you you will rise in the hereafter as you die whatever you die doing that's how you will rise just imagine subhanallah Hussein is that individual for whom according to Imam Ghazali the Prophet would lengthen prolong his sujood not only when he was alone in Jama'at فَأَتَالَ سُجُودَ nas. Imam Ghazali says even in Jama'at the Prophet would lengthen his sujood. Why? Because Hussein as a child would be on his back. So that tarbiyat that the Prophet gave him, that Ali gave him, that Fatima gave him, that hassan Mujtaba gave him. Alayhi salat was salam. That Tarabiyyat played its role. How he revived and safeguarded the most perfect theme of Islam. Three messages so far. The last important message of Hussein Azam from many messages, from many lessons is the importance of veracity of truthfulness of sadaqat in Arabic satchai in Urdu 
according to my studies when he was martyred he was 56 years old five months and five days that was his age and before he was granted the honor of shahadat by allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he spoke to the army of the enemies in their thousands reminded them who he was of his grandfather of his mother of his father of his brother of his family and he spoke about his uh, azamat his uh, greatness as tahdis and ni'mat he reminded them who he was it's a friday afternoon scorching heat of karbala 72 members of family and friends butchered there in front of him on that very same day but here is husain azam and one thing that really appeals to me is that he said to the enemy or oh, people know that I am Hussein Ibn Ali the man who has never ever spoken a word of falsehood he's 56 years old jab aapne apna ta'aruf karaya zindagi ke aakhri lamhat mein to apne mutalliq ye baat bhi kahi کہ اے لوگو سن لو کہ میں وہ حسین ابن علی ہوں جس نے زندگی میں کبھی جھوٹ نہیں بولا یو نو اٹس ویری ایزی فار می ٹو سٹ ہیئر ان دا کمفرٹ آف مائی ہوم اینڈ اسپیک ٹو یو اٹس ایزی فار یو ٹو بی ٹیون ان ٹو دس لائیو میسج اور لیٹر آن وین یو ان شاء اللہ لسن ٹو دس سرمن Just think about it. This is Hussain Azam who says, I've never lied in my entire life. He didn't say for the last one month or the, for the last one year, for the last one decade. He says, my entire life. And this is something I've read with my own eyes. I've not heard this from ulama or scholars. I've read it in books. Do you not find this beautiful seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu لَقَدْ قَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ عُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ The same message from the life of Ghawse Azam رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ Here is Hussain Azam saying exactly the same thing So I'm going to sum up my brothers and sisters If we are true lovers and عُسْشَاق of this blessed son of Rasulullah sallam of Ali and Hussain of Ali and Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma then we need to follow in his footsteps this was my subject for this very short talk i have spoken about the importance of sabr the importance of istiqamah the importance of salah and the importance of sadaqat There's so much for us to learn. And not only Muslims, even very famous, learned non-Muslims have paid tribute to Hussain Azam. Let me quickly sum up, inshallah. According to Thomas Carlyle, who is a very famous Scottish historian and essayist, he says, and he writes, the best lesson which we get from the tragedy of Karbala is that Hussain and his companions were rigid believers in God, Istiqamat. They illustrated that the numerical superiority does not count when it comes to the truth and the falsehood. The victory of Hussain, the victory of Hussain, the victory of Hussain, despite his minority, marvels me. This is a kafir saying this about Hussain Azam. The famous Indian political leader Gandhi, he says, I learned from Hussein how to achieve victory 
while being oppressed. Isn't that a lesson for us? Think about it. You have Palestine, you have Kashmir, you have Bosnia, you have Chechnya, you have Myanmar, you have the Muslims in China. He says, I have learned to be victorious while being oppressed. Charles Dickens, English novelist, he writes, If Hussein had fought to quench his worldly desires, then I do not understand why his sister, wife and children accompanied him. You know, today you have so-called Muslims, غير مقلدون, Wahhabiya, the likes of Nalaik from Mumbai. They say he fought for Kursi. Do Shahzadon ki jangti. This is their version. So he went for jang, according to them, who read Kalma and Namaz, but have the worst of Aqaid. But here is a Kafir, Charles Dickens, saying, I do not understand why his sister and wife and children accompanied him if it was for worldly desires. He says, It stands to reason, therefore, that he sacrificed purely for Islam. Allah Ta'ala Hame Hussain Azam radiallahu ta'ala anki Mubarak zindagi se or shahadat se asbaq Hasil karne ki tawfiq ata farmaye और फिर उन पर अमल करने की तौफीक عطا فرمائے اللہ ان کے فیوز و برکات سے ہم سب کو مالا مال فرمائے واخر دعوانا ان الحمد لله رب العالمين